Hey everybody, this is Chris from Crimson Blades. In this video, I'm going to be going over Gloomhaven Digital's layout and how to navigate the user interface as well as some shortcuts. Whether you're a veteran board gamer looking to get into the digital version or a brand new player, we hope you'll take a few minutes to watch this video because we think you're going to find something useful which will make your Gloomhaven Digital sessions a lot smoother. There are bookmarks down in the video description below which will let you skip around the points of interest. Let's start in the top left in the party screen. You can either add or remove a mercenary from your party by clicking on their profile picture. At the right hand side is your mercenary statistics at a glance. Below this is your personal quest. You can either play with your personal quest revealed or if you prefer you can hide it by clicking on the conceal icon. You have a bar tracking how close you are to achieving your personal quest and retiring. Some characters have an alternate skin which can be revealed by clicking on this icon. It doesn't affect the game in any way, it's just a cool different look for your character. Finally there's the option to delete your mercenary on this screen. In the hand menu, you're going to be able to see all the ability cards which are available to you. The maximum hand size is on the top and you can have any combination of cards you want. Remember that you can change out your hand of cards at any time. On the top right, you're going to see this icon which reveals a side menu containing the cards you did not pick when you leveled up your character. This is important because the next time you level up, you can still pick these lower level cards instead of a new card. Importantly, in Guildmaster mode only, at the bottom of this side menu is where you have the option to reset your mercenary. You can reset your mercenary at any time in Guildmaster without losing any of the experience, gold or items. The equipment menu is next. The only thing to remember here is to make sure you actually equip the items you buy before heading out on the dungeon because it's not automatically done. The perks menu is next. You gain perk points by successfully completing battle goals which you select before heading into dungeons. Three perk points will unlock one perk. Perks allow you to alter your attack modifier deck. The attack modifier deck is the deck of cards which determine how successful your attack is. And the goal of getting more perks is to make your attack modifier deck more efficient. All these little pips which you see under the attack modifier is the number of those cards which are present in your attack modifier deck. In this example you can see how I'm picking the remove negative 2 perk in order to get the minus 2 modifier card out of my modifier deck. And you can see how that pip just disappears there. Going back to the menu, you can see how much gold you have as well as your experience points and how close you are to leveling up. You can scroll across the world map by using the W, S, A and D keys and can select a dungeon either by clicking on its icon on the map or by using this drop down menu on the right hand side where you can see upcoming dungeons as well as replay dungeons you've already completed. The dungeon breakdown lets you know the name of the dungeon, the geographic location of where the dungeon is and this is important information because certain personal quests require you to complete missions in different parts of the map. You're given the objective of the mission and told whether this is a core quest which progresses the campaign or a side mission. Most importantly, you learn the types of enemies you're going to be facing because this allows you to modify your hand of cards to maximize your chances of success. And finally, you're told what the rewards for completing the dungeon will be. Clicking on the map icon again opens up a map of Gloomhaven City. Clicking on the merchant tab opens up the merchant shop where you may buy items for a certain price and sell them at half the cost. Now you can see that the cost of these items have been affected by a modifier. That brings us back to the top left to look at three more statistics. First is your party level. Monster statistics trap damage, the amount of gold you get from money piles and the amount of bonus experience for completing a scenario are all dependent on the party level. The scenario level is calculated from the average level of all the party members and is further modified by the difficulty setting. In a nutshell, a higher party level and a higher difficulty setting means more difficult dungeons with a bigger reward. However, newer players are strongly advised to start on normal or easy difficulty and increase the difficulty as they gain more experience playing. The next metric is reputation, which is how good or evil your mercenaries are. Reputation is modified by the choices you make throughout the campaign. A positive reputation means things in the store are cheaper. Negative reputation means they're more expensive. Some events and even some classes are unlocked by achieving a high or low enough reputation. 
Next up is the Gloomhaven Wealth level, also known as the Prosperity level in the board game version. Increasing your wealth level should be a priority for all parties because it allows you to unlock more powerful items from the merchant store. You can level up your wealth by gaining prosperity points. In this example here, you can see that we are at wealth level 3 and we need 6 more prosperity points to get to the next wealth level. You can gain prosperity points through events and by completing scenarios, but one of the most reliable ways to get it is by donating gold to the temple and that is our next tab. Every 10 gold you donate to the temple, you will get 2 bless or times 2 modifiers in your deck, which is good for the next dungeon. But more importantly, as a group, every 50 gold you donate to the temple, you will get 1 prosperity point, which goes a long way to slowly increasing your wealth level and unlocking better items. Next up are Enhancements. Enhancements are not unlocked at the start of the game. You unlock them after about 6 travel quests in Guildmaster mode and similarly in the main Gloomhaven campaign you unlock them pretty early on. Enhancements are permanent upgrades to your ability cards. They are expensive but also very powerful. An important thing to remember in Gloomhaven Digital is that enhancements can be bought and sold for the same price. You don't lose any money when you sell an enhancement so in that regard they are pretty good investment. Very quickly, in Guildmaster mode only, you have the Trainer tab and this is where you go if you want to find out what the requirements are for unlocking the secret classes. There are lists of different achievements you can accomplish. Finally, this flashing icon is the City Events tab and when it's flashing, it means that there is an available City event for you to participate in. That was a lot to go over. Why don't we get out of the City and into one of the dungeons to see what the interface looks like. We hope you're finding the video useful so far. Please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Thank you so much for all the support you've been showing us. And now on with the show. You can switch between the characters you're playing either by clicking on the character model or clicking on the character symbol in the top left. Here you'll see the character's class as well as their experience tracked in real time. When you select ability cards, look at the initiative tracker and how it's updated at the top of the screen. The number 14 is glowing because that is your leading initiative, meaning you will go at an initiative of 14. However, if you click your other card, now you can see that you're going at an initiative of 48. You can switch your leading initiative to the other card by clicking on the circle containing the initiative number so that it's glowing. The glowing circle means that that is going to be the initiative value which you take your turn. And always double check your leading initiative before starting a round because it's very easy to make a mistake and be confused as to why you're going so late when you meant to go really early. Let's go down the side menu. Clicking on the first icon will give you a global view of all the mercenaries' hands and equipment. Be warned though that this may not always be up to date. A shortcut to access this menu is ALT. By hovering over this menu, you can also see the items you have equipped. After you spend or consume an item, the image will change from color to black and white. In the global overview, you can also see the items, but notice that at a glance, they don't look like they've been consumed. You actually need to hover over them to see that they're black and white, meaning they've been used already. So if, that's why I said that the global overview can be a little bit unreliable at times, but it does give you kind of a good general idea of what's going on. One of the most important shortcuts to know is numeric key 1 for player 1, numeric key 2 for player 2, and so on because this actually shows you what's going on in your hand right now, along with your discard pile and your burn pile. The cards in color are those which are currently in your hand. The black and white cards, if you see the card title is white, that means it's in your discard pile. If it's gray or red, it's in your burn pile. It's very important to remember. Again, the black and white cards with the white titles are in your discard pile. The gray and red titles are in your burn pile. When I click numeric key 2, this is the tinkerer's hand and you can see that he has a few cards in his discard pile with a white title, the black and white cards there, as well as one card with a red title in his burn pile. Currently when you short rest and are trying to decide what card to burn, there's no way to see what other cards are in your hand, burn pile or discard pile other than this shortcut, which is why I think it's important to be able to know how to do it and recognize the colors. Whenever you short rest, remember the numeric keys. The next icon is your attack modifier deck with each pip representing how many of those cards you have in your deck and this will change as you fight your way through the dungeon. We already mentioned the initiative tracker on the top of the screen where you'll get a lot of information once the round starts. Very importantly on the right hand side here you're going to see your objective and how close you are to accomplishing it as well as your battle goal. In Gloomhaven Digital, hovering over an enemy or an ally can give you a lot of information about that character. 
Here you can see their current gold experience points being tracked, how close they are to accomplishing their battle goal or their personal quest, as well as what their current attack modifier deck looks like. When you hover over an enemy as you see here, you can see what their attack modifier deck looks like with all the pips highlighted there. You can also see the monster's base stats as well as any abilities or conditions that are affecting them right now. When you are ready, you can start the round and the monster ability cards are drawn. Here you can see what the monsters are going to be doing this turn, including their initiative as well as their actions. You don't need to worry about the monster's base stats because everything is calculated automatically and what you see on the card is what they're going to do. According to the updated initiative tracker, our Tinker is going to go first. So we'll have to pick either the top ability of one card and the bottom ability of another. Or we could go with the default attack or the default move action. Everything highlights very nicely as you see here which makes it very easy to pick the exact action which you want. Hovering over the initiative tracker now will show you what everybody's actions are going to be. And hovering over the enemies will show you updated information with their actions. When moving, you can either click on the hex you want to move to and an automated pathway will be generated or you could move the hex by hex and undo any waypoints you want along the way. It's your choice. Clicking skip movement will end your movement. When you have an area of effect attack armed, remember to hit the R key to rotate the hexes in order to get the exact targets which you want to attack. If you plan to use an item, don't forget to activate it and make sure the box is glowing before attacking in order to ensure that it's actually used. In this next example, we're going to open the door and I want you to pay attention to the initiative tracker on top. You can see that new monsters are added as soon as you open the door and they take their turn immediately after the mind thief ends his. Another very important shortcut to know is tab. When you hit this, it's going to highlight all the points of interest in the entire dungeon including enemies, loot, obstacles, whether they're single or multiple hex, traps. It's highly advisable to make use of this tab frequently in order to identify where everything is. Line of sight from one hex to another can also be drawn by holding down the L key and moving your mouse from one hex to another. This is extremely important, especially for archers and trying to path out their line of sight so that you can see which hexes you can go to in order to avoid archery fire. Elements are generated at the end of your turn and you can see it being created on the right hand side. A strong element will appear very full and glowing and if it's not used in the following turn, it will be waning and appear half full and that's your last chance to use it before it disappears at the end of that round. Using an element is just like using an item, you have to make sure you select it and make sure it's glowing before you proceed with the action. Here we are about to play a card with an active bonus which will remain in your play area until it's discarded or burnt. Pay attention to the initiative tracker where you can see that as soon as you perform the action, you get a marker indicating that you have an active ability in progress. This also applies to summons. You can discard or burn this card by clicking on it and choosing to burn it. If the game's animations are too slow for your taste, you can always speed it up by pressing the fast forward icon in the lower right. This won't affect the game in any way, it'll just speed the animations up. All the shortcuts we talked about today can be found in the pause menu and can be modified according to your preference. Hovering over objects and characters will give you a lot of information on the maps and always double check your actions before committing to them because that's how you prevent accidentally skipping your attack or skipping your movement. We hope the tips we gave you in this video will really help improve your game. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And again, we appreciate all the support you've been giving us. Please remember to like and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.